guys. Hi, how's it going? How are you doing today? Hopefully today finds you well. Today I am doing the next installment in my palette roulette series in which I review a palette that I have in my collection that you might also have in your collection. I show you some live swatches. I tell you my thoughts, my opinions, my experiences with the palette. I show you some looks I was able to create and then we pull another palette and we do it all over again and I hope that you're here for it. For those of you new here, hi my name is Donna. I'm a lover of all things high-end, colorful beauty and self-care. I also work as a field leader for Ulta Beauty so I get a lot of education in my position. I like to bring you that education here on my platform through things like reviews but I also do all kinds of the same beauty content creation that you see out there because I really just like to talk about makeup and I'm sure if you're here you also like to talk about makeup so I hope that you find that this channel warms your soul and brings solace to your inner peace as much as it does mine and that you'll want to subscribe before you go and with that said let's roll into this palette review I'll be going over the Charlotte Tilbury Quad in Walk of No Shame and a Bellin Argent Plum Premonition palette that I got in Etsy. All right, all right. So here we are. I've got these two palettes to go over with you today. This one is a palette that I believe I received in Ipsy. It is the Bell and Argent Plum Premonition palette and it looks like this. And then I have also the Charlotte Tilbury Quad in Walk of No Shame, and it looks like this. So I think that they, you know, went together rather well, if I'm honest. I think that I was able to pull some looks utilizing both palettes, and today I've got just the Bell and Argent palette on my eyes. There's also a look in the pictures that I'll post in here that is just the Charlotte Tilbury quad, but other than that, like I think that they pair together quite well. I am gonna first go over the Bell and Argent quad because it is like mirrored, metallic, and will probably blind you. So I wanna get over this one as soon as possible. This is what the Bell and Argent palette looks like. This is again, the Bell and Argent panchromatic palette and plum premonition. It does have a mirrored exterior and the back has the shade names on it, which is great because the only other place that the shade names appear is on the little plastic insert inside of the palette and I've lost it. And this palette does come in at $26 on the Bell and Argent website. It does have five stars with nine reviews on Bell and Argent and then it has 4.6 stars with 14.7 thousand reviews on Ipsy. This does have eight shades in it. It looks like this. Four of them are mattes, three of them are shimmers, and there is one in here that is a pressed glitter. The mirror I thought was super cute because it has this eyeball on it. I thought initially it was on the little like plastic like sticker thing that is on the mirrors when you first get them in a palette and was delighted to see that that eyeball was still there when I pulled that sticker off. So there's that. The shadows in this palette are really super silky. I would say even the shimmers and even the glitter isn't super grippy to the touch, which was shocking to me. Like typically glitters are really gritty. Um, this glitter isn't. It feels like it's suspended in like some kind of like maybe like petroleum jelly to some extent. Um, they have jojoba and argon oil infused into the formula, which means they're going to be you know, kind to you. They're a little bit more hydrating than some other formulas of shadows could be. They are vegan and they are cruelty free. And this is a luxury, luxury makeup brand inspired by art. And I have to say that I feel like they really encompassed art well. This is not a plastic or cardboard palette. This is metal, but it's not like weighty metal. It is really rather light for a metal palette. 
but I do believe it is metal. It might be plastic, but the bottom mm. might be plastic. But this definitely has a different, like, tink to it when you hit it versus this back here. So I do think that this back here is plastic, but this I believe is metal. And just the, like the little squares, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get close enough for you to see the like, the wrap around this is how very um, artsy it is as far as the palette goes. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's necessarily gives the vibe of like, Picasso by any means but with the you know the eyeball in here and the way that the palette looks it does give a nice little arty kind of thought process and the box also I feel like gives a little bit of like famous painter vibe I really dug the box really dig the look of the palette to be honest the performance with these is the same, I feel like, with or without a primer as far as blendability and, you know, how they, how they pack on top of each other. I think that it performs just as good with a primer as it does without a primer. Where I think that you're going to see the differences come into play is with a primer, this will last about seven hours before visible fading. Without a primer, it only lasts about five and a half, maybe six. So for longevity purposes, it's best to use a primer with these, but they do perform really well with or without a primer. The one that I think is the worst, honestly, is this deep dark brown, which is really sad because it is the deepest matte in the palette and it really does bring a little bit to the table as far as variance, workability, or color story. It really is... A beautiful like almost cool toned brown and I really liked it but it was the worst one as far as patchiness or voiding went for me as a matter of fact it's in my eye look today and I think that you can see the difference in how it performed on this eye versus how it's performing on this eye there's just and I do have a wonky eye so some of that is my eyeballs fault but I am also able to like fix it most of the time with really, really great shadows or even putting a lighter color in and mixing it up really well and getting the blend that I need it to have, but it just didn't want, it just didn't want to go anywhere. So I think that they are super buttery and I think that they are very easy to blend, but there is a little bit of rough edges with this, with this brown that was super disappointing for me. I think that also, if you hate Fallout, this palette is going to be your nemesis. There is so much Fallout with this palette, including the shimmers, especially the glitter. But this, this dark brown was also the worst for Fallout. I have pictures of me doing my eye look in a hotel room, like being out for the business last week. And... You know, here's the true tea. Like, there isn't a, ho a hotel room on the planet that has the best lighting system ever for doing, you know, a makeup look where you're normally standing in front of a mirror that has, like, good studio lighting. I took pictures of said I look after I got everything done and thought I had wiped away all the fallout and whatnot. It was the one time I did my makeup after I had done my base because I, could, I went back and forth on whether I was going to do an eye look that day. And the pictures, you can see the shadow from where the fallout had landed all over my cheek. And I was like, these are perfect. That's perfect. How did I not notice that before I walked out the hotel room door? Because I did notice it when I finally got into a store, but it was too late at that point. Like I didn't, I couldn't just take it off because I would have taken all my makeup off. So I tried to blend it in as best as possible. It was a hot damn mess that day, but... I mean, what do you do? What do you do? So anyways, it's a hugely powdery formula. I wouldn't say it's necessarily super soft in the pan, but it does like almost immediate to the touch get super powdery. So I guess that lends to it being super soft in the pan. That softness in the pan, that powderiness in the pan does translate to fallout all over your face as well currently like looking at myself in the mirror I can tell you there's glitter all over my face because 
I did put this glitter on my eye look today. It's the only color in the whole, you know, bulk of colors that I had to use today that I hadn't really used. I'd swatched it, but I hadn't really used it. We all know how I feel about glitter. So I decided to use it today because I know I can film and then immediately take my makeup off and the glitter's not going to be all over my face all day long. But it's just, it's all over. <laughs> it's all over the place. But it does have a nice um, kind of like silicone feel to it. So it feels like it's glitter suspended into some kind of petroleum jelly. There isn't really any kind of base to it other than that jelly. So it's definitely a very clear base. The shimmers also really, really work well with a brush, which is amazing. Sometimes shimmers don't work super well with a brush, so you, you know, have to go in with your finger to have them be impactful. I didn't feel that way with these ones. And this one over here is actually one of my favorite ones that I used this week. It's also in my, I have most of the colors in this palette in my eye look today. The only one I do not is this one. I guess these three here I don't have in my eye look today. This one was one of my favorites, but this one is also a lot more impactful than I gave it credit for initially. I really did enjoy them and they are really super stunning shadows that lean kind of cool and help create beautiful eye looks. And there's plenty of versatility in this palette, I do feel, because you can go like a brown with a light lid, a brown with a pinky lid, a pink with a brown. I mean, there's a lot of versatility in this, shell, in this palette. It does play very well with all other partnerships that you put into it. Like, I didn't have any trouble partnering it with the Charlotte Tilbury quad. There was also no creasing with this palette. It's genuinely decent. However, I might surprise you. I am going to get rid of it because this shadow I, I won't use again. I used it today. I won't use it again. It's a glitter shadow. We all know how I feel about glitter. I mean, bottom line, that was no surprise there, right? I really like this shade here and I really like this shade here. This one is just too dark. It looks very much like a mustard, but in my eye look today, do you see a mustard? No, me either. And I put this <laughs> this in my eye look today. And I really just wish it would be a little bit more tan or mustard leaning, which is what it looks like it's supposed to. Mm. But instead, it's really dark brown and it's almost as dark as this brown. Um, this brown, I hated using because there's fallout everywhere and because it gets a little bit patchy. So this color, I really did love. But it also gets really really dark and I just feel mm. like I have better like almost lilacs or you know mauvey tones in my collection that I would reach for first so ultimately this whole bottom row is out for me I hated working with them I hated how the color changed on my eyes I hate glitters so there's that and those are three of the mattes in this palette. So that leaves this matte, which is honestly a really great matte, and these three shimmers. I loved this shimmer. This one, really beautiful, really impactful, but I don't do golds very often. So that leaves three shadows in this eight pan palette that I might pull for again. And those three shadows, I'm certain I have over and over and over in my collection. So really pretty, but also not pretty enough for me to keep it. I also really firmly do not believe that I would ever pay $26 for this palette. Number one, it's a company that, I mean, really who's heard of Bell and Argent except for those that get it in a box. Like, is this really a luxury brand that I'm gonna go after anytime soon? No, I thought that they were great shadows. I thought that they were good shadows. I did not think that they were great shadows and I wouldn't pull for this palette before I pulled for another one. I think that there are some really great things about it. It's got a really nice clasp on it and it is an eight pan color story that would be fantastic for travel. It was fantastic for travel for me, but also it's just messy. 
it's messy Jesse, and I just can't, I just can't with it. I couldn't trust that it wasn't going to fall out all over my face. And I couldn't trust that I wasn't going to go out looking like a moron because it was all over the place. So this palette, I am going to declutter. All right, I am going to swatch this for you. We have Exposed. It's a white, beigey white. Skin tone, if you're as light as I am, really great transition shade. I used our, you know, a base shade, a setting shade. I used it in my brow bone, my inner corner. I loved it in my inner corner. It was nice and stark and beautiful. Then we have Edit. Edit is kind of a cool tone, warm leaning mauve, which is very strange, but it looks beautiful in an eye look. Almost, it looks almost gray in an eye look, which is really interesting because it looks almost peachy on here, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at it in the pan and say it looks peachy. I mean, you tell me, does that look peachy to you? All right. Then we have, I think it's sign. It's C I N E. This is a really pretty, like champagne -y gold tone, almost like buttery, like margarine. And then we have this one, which is called antagonist. And it is a beautiful, like, plum-toned burgundy shimmer. So these three are shimmers, and that one is a matte. Then we have Photo Play, which is the mustard-looking shade in the palette. You can see it's just so dark. And then we have Adaption, which is a mauve. Then we have Callback which is the cool tone brown. Then we have Diffusion, which is the glitter. And I really do think the glitter is beautiful. It's got like flecks of orange and gold and pink and green in there. I just hate glitters. I think that you guys can see there really is a lot of versatility in this palette and I think that you can get a lot of really great looks with it. But like, let me just show you just swatching that brown you guys see all the fallout from just swatching that brown how insane is that like there's just that's just that's too much that's too much fallout it it gets all over your face and then your whole makeup is ruined and you didn't even know it freaking happened it's like attack of the brown shadow it's so stupid it just irritates me I just can't handle it. And typically, I am not that bitch. I am not the one that cares about whether there's fallout or no. With, I mean, ABH is one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas, and those are fallout central. This one is just also super hard to get off your face, and I don't, I don't know why. I don't want to walk around with fallout all over my face, and I also felt like I had wiped it all off, so I'm almost wondering if that fallout occurred after the fact also. So is it like fallout all over my face all day long? And I'm sorry, but the luxury brands that I have in my collection have little to no fallout. Like I'm talking Charlotte Tilbury. I'm talking, you know, Natasha Denona, Wayne Goss, Pat McGrath. Zero to no fallout. So if you're going to boast yourself as a luxury brand, do something about your fallout. Just saying. I also was working with the Charlotte Tilbury Quad Walk of No Shame. It comes in at $53 for this quad. You can see what the packaging looks like. It's standard Charlotte Tilbury packaging. The back of it looks like this and gives you some information about the quad. How she labels her eyeshadows in here is on here. None of them have a name, but they are called uh, Prime Enhance Pop and Smoke, which is what it says back here. You get 0.18 ounces of product or 0.045 ounces per pan, which I don't think is horrible. These are normal size pans that you might find in any other palette. These are, you know, just a smidge bit smaller than, say, a single shadow that you might pick up from ColourPop. I don't necessarily think 0.045 ounces per pan in this quad is a bad size. I think that that's a decent size and it's pretty normal. What I think is awful about it is the price point. I mean, honestly, let's let's be real. I have paid 
lots of money for quads. I paid $65 for a Pat McGrath quad that had quite a bit more product in it that, than this little tiny guy. This was at one point called, called Walk of Shame and they changed the name of it in 2020. I don't, I don't know why I don't know the story behind that, but I also know that this is inspired by the Walk of Shame Matte Revolution lipstick. So I'm, I, did they change that lipstick name also? I don't know much about Charlotte Tilbury. This is the first Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow uh, palette that I've ever had in my life. And the biggest reason why is because I know I've got a lot of Charlotte Tilbury in my collection and I know I love Charlotte Tilbury products, um, a lot of them, but I also think that Charlotte Tilbury is way overpriced for what it actually is. There's very few Charlotte Tilbury products that I think are worth the money that you're going to pay for them. One of them is her most recent bronzer. I love that thing. These, these eyeshadow quads are just not it. I just do not believe that this is worth $53. Okay. So let's talk about it. This is one of 15 different kinds of quad color stories that is offered by Charlotte Tilbury. This one is in the red, crimson, rose gold shade category. And these all pull very pinky or orange, mostly orange on my skin tone. So there is no red or crimson in this, if you ask me. I really wanted this to be more red than it came out. I also really wanted just one effing matte in this palette, just one effing matte. And every single one of these is a satin or a shimmer shade. And when it comes to Charlotte Tilbury and her satins, they're not the kind of satins that I feel like I can use in the crease because they are really shiny. They're super impactful for a satin. A lot of times using a satin in my crease or a satin up, upwards towards the brow bone doesn't bother me because it's not as sheeny. In her formula it is, which I, I give her kudos for because that's how a satin is supposed to perform and it doesn't often happen, but it definitely did with this. So I didn't feel like I could use this palette anywhere but my lid space, which is on me. I get that. That's a me thing, not an everybody thing, but a lot of people don't feel like they can use a sheeny shade in the crease or otherwise. I do feel like I can use a sheeny shade in the crease, just not these sheeny shades because they're, they're too sheeny in my humble opinion. All of these are super, super soft, super buttery, very smooth, go on the eye, look great, do not add to texture. I mean, that's one thing I can say about them. Like they, even though sheeny, didn't really add any kind of texture to anywhere that I put them on the eye other than the lid space. I think that Charlotte Tilbury probably does aging really well, right? Uh, that's what she's known for, like her anti-aging properties of her makeup, of her skincare, of the whatevers. This performs best, I believe, on bare skin, with the, which is odd for me to say because I don't think I've ever come here and been like, use this with dry skin <laughs> because I am a huge proponent of primers. I think a lot of that has to do with the frostiness of it. The frostiness catches in a weird way on a primed eye that's not maybe set. And I don't always set my, I have never set my primed eyes. I think that this would probably perform better on a primed eye that was set. But I also thought, I think that it performed perfectly fine on a bare skinned eye. So it lasts, even on an unprimed eye, it lasts around eight hours before significant fading. And I think that that's a great wear time. I found it actually quite dull for the most part. The standout for me was the shade here. Um, after using all the other shades in here and finding them to be a little bit more dull than I anticipated they would be, having this one be as impactful as it was in an eye look. Like I want to use this as my inner corner and my brow bone shade for the rest of time. It is a beautiful, beautiful, simplistic, subtle, but also in your face kind of highlighting shade. And I loved it. And the funniest part of that is that is the prime shade that is by no means a white shadow that you should be priming your eyes with. It's 
too sparkly. You guys will see in the swatches, I do believe. The pop shade was nowhere near poppy as I thought it should be. It was definitely this one that did it for me. I do believe that this is super overpriced and really disappointing. I found that it was actually, like I said, quite dull and underwhelming. This does have 3.1 stars on Sephora with 12 reviews. It also has 4.5 stars on Charlotte Tilbury with 77 reviews and four stars on Beautylish with 143 reviews. But those 143 reviews are for all the Charlotte Tilbury quads. You know, this is the first Charlotte Tilbury any eyeshadow that I've ever had. And um, her palettes are just way too damn expensive for the amount of product that you get, which is why I haven't, you know, purchased. And I'm really glad that I got this in a lucky bag because that tells me that I am on the right track with this. I just don't think that her eyeshadows is where it's at. Don't come for me. I know there's so many people that love Charlotte Tilbury, but I just was not. I just wasn't impressed, if I'm honest. with it. I love her complexion products. I've tried so many of her products, her Airless Flawless Finishing Powder, her brand new bronzer. I've, I've tried so many of her complexion products and I really do love them. This, not super, super fan of. So there's a place for many of her products and I'm sure that there is an audience for her eyeshadows. I'm just not it. I love her blushes. I love her base products and her color face products. I don't love her eyeshadows. Just saying. Okay, let's swatch these. This one is called Prime. Do you guys see how shiny that is? Why is this called a Prime? This one is called Enhance, and it is kind of, I think it's supposed to be like a, like almost a red, but it's definitely kind of peachy in my opinion, like a dark burnt peach almost. Then we have this one, which is the Pop. And this one, I mean, you guys, that's just so dull. It's definitely, I mean, definitely this one over here pops a lot more than that one does. I think this is supposed to be like a rose gold, like impactful shimmer. It's just not it. It's just not it. And then the last one is this one here, which is called the Smoke Shade. I did like this shade. It was beautiful, but when I, and it looks a little bit more like almost red, on this maybe like a, a deep like mm, cherry burgundy almost when I put it on my skin it kind of went orange it just wasn't as red as I anticipated it would be based on the description of this palette and then these two here like I said this one was definitely more poppy and in your face then I mean you can't even you can't even see that like how is that the pop shade I was just disappointed. I was just disappointed with it. I'm not going to get rid of this palette because like I said, I want to put this on my inner corner and my brow bone every day for the rest of my life. And it's just a little tiny Charlotte Tilbury quad. What I am going to do, I do think, do you remember I said I had a mellow quad that I got when they asked me to be an ambassador of the brand that reminds me a lot of this only maybe a little more bit more brown. At one point I am going to do these two palettes together. Give this one a second go. We'll see how I like it with a palette that maybe has a little bit more matte to it or a little bit more brown to it. But I won't bring this into another palette roulette. But when I do palette roulette that quad, I will also be using this one in conjunction. With that said, I have a little bit of an announcement. So September is my birth month. <laughs> How I said that was just the weirdest. September is my birthday month and I typically do a lot more different content in my birthday month, like what I got for my birthday. I do a birthday giveaway. Um, I have a lot of videos that I want to put out that I haven't been able to put out because I'm doing my collection videos on Mondays. I'm doing my palette roulettes on Wednesdays and blah, 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 blah. So I only have truly like four to five videos that I can put out something different, right? Because I only upload three days a week. So in September, for palette roulette, I'm going to pull in my singles. 
and I am going to utilize my singles for the entire month of September. So on Wednesdays through September, we will not have a palette roulette video. The next palette roulette video that we will be doing will be in October and we will go over all the singles in my collection, which I have decided to keep or get rid of, probably get rid of, based on how I feel about them after one month of solid use. So there are two reasons why I'm doing this. Number one, you guys just saw my single shadow collection where I swatched them all and I have forgotten how many amazing single shadows that I have in my collection and never pull for them, never pull for them because I often forget. The secondary reason to that is I did get rid of 20 in that collection and declutter video, but I also got 20 new shades in my Sydney Grace Christmas in July haul, which you'll see on Friday this week. So you'll get to see some of those. There's also a lot of shades that are a little bit similar, but there's also a lot of shades that have been in my collection for far too long. And I need to, I just need to test them, you guys. I just need to get some use out of them. So pay attention to my Instagram because I'll be popping the looks that I make you using my single shadows on my Instagram. And I'll put in that what those single shadows were. I'm kind of excited, honestly. What I think this will also do is maybe enable us to get through the rest of the year with the palettes that I have and then come December 31st or whenever our last December palette roulette is, I'm calling it quits <laughs> to this series that has been going for over three years on my channel at this point. I've reviewed somewhere around 212 eyeshadow palettes through this palette roulette series on my channel. I'm going to call it quits to this and we're going to start doing something else with the palettes in my collection because I think we'll be um, about run out of palettes anyways, but I also just kind of want to, I just want to be able to pick up a palette and use that palette. So we'll do like five looks, one palette or something like that with our, with our palettes instead. So I'm going to go grab my singles. I'll be right back. Okay. You guys have seen all these because you saw the video, but I have a single palette um, selection of Cleona shadows. I have like 17 Cleona shadows. I also have this palette, which I was recently able to reorganize in that palette collection and declutter. It's got a lot of Sydney Grace in it um, over here, but it's also got some Ofra and it's also got some Hikari and some ABH, I believe it is. And then I have also got this guy here, which is my book of shades, but it is full of all of my other shadows and I've got them all organized by color. First Wednesday in October is the 5th. That's my sister's birthday and my friend Sasha's birthday and I'll be in Vegas that week. So that'll be fun. I will come back to you in a month and we will go over all of these shades, all of these shadows, all of that craziness right there. And I just hope that you're prepared for a whole lot of other content coming to you in September. I really want to finish my collection series. I also just have some tags, some fun tags that we're going around. And um, I've got a lot of other things that I want to do. I've got a giveaway coming very soon. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And yeah, you guys, I just love you so much. I hope that you and yours are safe and healthy and well out there. I hope that you guys are getting along as best that you can in this crazy world and that you're loving each other, but loving each other from afar. Until next time. Bye friend.